such a difference on the network in relation to train travel, uh, social distancing and seat allocation to try and keep the R factor down. Later in the week I'll be going down to Liverpool Lime Street to meet up with TPE to see what they've been doing as regards to keeping within the government guidelines of social distancing and essential travel on the railways. And just to show you the state of play across the network, Rick who works for the railways sent me some content of York Station and Manchester Piccadilly just showing the state of play of how deserted and how serious the train operators and the passengers are treating this risk. So social distancing measures look like to be knocking out at least 80% of the seat capacity, if not more, on rail travel, being part of the way of these train operators trying to keep passengers safe from COVID. So it will be compulsory to be wearing these masks, not particularly these ones, not necessarily surgical masks but any sort of face covering that's adequate while you're on public transport and this is what Grant Shapps was talking about as regards to protecting those who travel on the railways and as to be expected they will be enforcing these rules so from the 15th of this month you will be expected to wear some sort of face covering like I said in the previous vlogs British Transport Police and Marshals or volunteers will be combing the network at railway stations and on trains trying to police the social restriction guidelines and these as well. So if you're travelling on a train, whether you believe it or not, just get yourself a mask. Keep yourself happy, no one else safe. So the reason why I've come down to Leyland today, not only just to try and help you understand about social distancing and wearing face coverings on the trains when they come into force uh, on the 54, sounds a bit harsh that doesn't it really, but it is just for your own safety. And Lidl have started, I think Aldi are packing these in again, only about 50p so I smell all pretty nice like I've had a bath when I get in. But it's, uh, it is essential and it is to keep people who are more at risk of contracting this virus. I mean, we know that, don't we? We've heard it in the news so many times. But I thought it'd be quite appropriate to kill two birds with one stone. So not only sort of explain a little bit about the face coverings, which is fairly forward and straightforward and simple, but we've also got a very special train, the locomotive, uh, locomotive that I'm expecting to come from crew today. So it'd be really great to get that. And I've got bags to get through as well. Lots of uh, news uh, to share with you. Starting on a, a happier note that uh, a badger was seen being dragged along the tracks. Uh, yeah, well, don't put the phone down. Don't need to ring the, the RSPCA you know, as it was. Uh, as it was, uh, it was AC's locomotive groups 89001, which was being relocated from Barrow Hill to to Tooton, where it will receive a new livery. And Jamie from Railcam, uh, we often talk to each other uh, with Railcam, keeping uh, in the loop with things. He sent these excellent images of 60 
046 William Wilberforce Hall in 89001 to Tooton for a repaint. Now it was running as 0 Zulu 89 Barrow Hill Loco Sheds to Tooton uh, Trap Maintenance Depot passing Shipley Gate on the 30th of April this year. He explains saying that it's still sat outside Tooton passing Shipley Gate on the 30th of April this year and he explains that it's still sat outside Tooton and yet to enter the paint facility so we won't be seeing it in its fresh skin just yet. Now this locomotive was once earmarked to be used in the Channel Tunnel of all places as it once pulled passengers along the East Coast main line but no future love came its way and ultimately it ended up in preservation truly one of its kind. And whether you like them or not let's talk about the Pacers again because their days are definitely ending eventually at the end of the year but Connor caught some pictures from the Pacer move to Leeming Bar recently uh, 35, 142, 35 and 41 cut at Morton on Swale working the 5 Alpha 40 from Gascoigne Wood to Leeming Bar one set that will not go quietly as regards the Pacer farewell tour uh, I was contacted by Northern recently as an update and they're still keen to do a Pacer farewell tour and obviously it'd be pointless to do the Pacer farewell tour in these conditions and while the Pacers are still running the ultimate goal is to make sure the Pacers aren't running that's both 142s and 144s uh, finalise them then do the tour itself so we might be looking into uh, early next year maybe Easter next year but that's just my surmise don't go along with it uh, it's just when I feel that maybe when the weather's a bit better as well that possibly we could do the pace so it's still on the pace of farewell tour is still filmed on the books there at Northern so I'm eagle-eyed trying to keep an eye out for this particular locomotive but in the meantime Andrew he did message me to say that it's been confirmed that the Voyagers, Avanti, have a Voyagers that they, well, they don't really use. I don't think they use them, are they really? Um, that uh, they want to get rid of anyway, for sure. I don't know who's going to end up having them, not under these conditions anyway. But they're going to get, going to get rid of them. Uh, the Avanti Voyagers will be replaced by the AT300s. Uh, it's possible that there'll be the new BR 805s and 807s. If you know more, comment down below. Um, but they will definitely replace the 221s from about 2022. This has also been confirmed by Richard Clinic's Twitter feed, uh, which I'm sure most of you have been following. So it's, uh, I think it's pretty good viable information that I can share with you as regards the 221s coming out of service. The dreaded Voyagers. Not many people like the Voyagers, do you? about investment and uh, changes HS2 messaged me uh, last week actually to share some uh, excellent content actually of Curzon Street Roundhouse HS2 Limited has unearthed what is thought to be the world's oldest railway roundhouse at the construction site of its Birmingham Curzon Street station built to a design of the 19th century engineer Robert Stevenson the roundhouse was operational on the 12th November 1837, meaning the recently discovered building is likely to predate the current title holder of the world's oldest in Derby by almost two years. The roundhouse was situated adjacent to the old Curzon Street station, which was the first railway terminus serving the centre of Birmingham. The roundhouse, and specifically the turntable, was used to turn around the engines so the locomotives could return back down the line. Engines were also stored and serviced in these facilities. Thanks to HS2 for sharing this content, it's absolutely amazing and it's great that they want to share this with the Nodrog community. So I want to catch this class 87 in her new livery, which is the intercity swallow livery, which will be heading through Leyland in about half an hour, in fact less than half an hour. I've just been speaking to a chap over there saying uh, 
there's a freight train coming down, I can't remember which one it is, but if I try and get that for you, I will. But crucially, this is definitely the one that I want to get. Now it's been running up and down here on the line for the past couple of days, uh, maybe a couple of days before, maybe tomorrow as well, as a light locomotive move. I think the head codes have varied. Uh, between 0, Zulu 86 and 89 so I believe if you know comment more down below now this locomotive or these locomotives were absolutely iconic running on the west coast mainland this is their home where they were pulling passenger services back from I think the late 70s into the 80s in fact they carried on when Virgin the franchise took over uh, before the Pendolino before the uh, the Pendolino took over from those so there's quite a few of them photographs out there of them in the VT livery now there are three class 87s in the country that have gone into preservation. Now she has two sisters here in Britain that are in preservation. Uh, if you've been to the National Railway Museum, Stevenson Royal Scott 001 is there uh, in British Rail Blue. And also her other sister, which is number 35, is at the Crew Heritage Centre. Again, it's a static display like the National Railway Museum um, and it's in British Rail Blue as well. Now today, 002 is doing a little jaunt driver training from Crewe uh, to Preston shunt, shunt sidings and then she'll be coming all the way down again uh, shortly after. So it'd be nice to try and get her twice. Maybe I'm going to try and photograph her coming this way first and then photo, uh, video her uh, going back before we end the vlog. So it'll be really, really good fun to see this beautiful bit of kit making its way across the West Coast Main Line, a very familiar home where it's going to firmly stay on British shores because the rest of her sisters, or most of the rest of her sisters, have now all been shipped off to Bulgaria. What is it with Bulgaria and our locomotives? So today, I've brought this out. And I don't usually often do both video and photography. It gets a bit difficult to try and get the shots. But I've got my old EOS 300, charged the batteries up and hopefully with this line of sight she'll be able to get the Royal Sovereign really sweet. Lighting's a bit flat but beggars can't be choosers. Listen, don't forget from the 15th of this month onwards, get yourself some face coverings. I got a pack of 10 from Lidl, 7 99 I know, extortionate, but uh, you, the disposable ones anyway, but you don't necessarily have to uh, use them ones as long as you've got decent face covering. And someone put this on my uh, Facebook page it's a pacer cover. <laughs> I know. What is this? It's brilliant though, isn't it? I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm not going to put the link in because I don't want to endorse anything without their permission. But I'm sure if you uh, go on my Facebook page, you will find the link that's been put there by Jack. And if you want one, they're only a tenner. Uh, they're really good fun. Yeah, two. Some two. Oh, good grief. An 87. Oh. Yeah, she's on the way now. Two. Double O two. Double O two. Oh, there you go. You. There we got her. In the end, how thank ace was you that? Very that? You're very welcome. Mind you, we're coming back, so about half an hour. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Oh, 
uh, it's really exciting to see 87002 at Leyland on a driver training run. Excellent intercity livery, absolutely stunning and beautiful. And I can't wait for the rail charter services to have them on their books running up and down the West Coast Main Line where she belongs. Now I've arrived at Preston Station, I'm a little bit behind, my train has been cancelled. But there's always a silver lining. We've got a Wembley to Edinburgh uh, Caledonian service, which is due any time now. So it'd be great to capture that on camera and take pictures too. In fact, I think, I think it's here. There you go. Unfortunately, I missed it on the video. I didn't press the little red button at the same time taking the photographs. But there's the photographs for you. Uh, 90, 0, 23, empty, empty loco, um, light loco rather, making its way up to Edinburgh, Caledonian service. A little bit of a treat. Right, uh, before I disappear, uh, Reese from in Barrow in Cumbria wanted me to say a little hi to you. Uh, I hope you're happy pal and you're keeping safe. I've got your little note so I thought I'd give you, give you a mention. He says he loves Nodro vlogs. And uh, as I do to you all, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. And from what was Leyland but now Preston, waiting for my Blackpool bound train. Until next time, ta -ra.